BuddyBase helps us to develop data-driven applications. And forms are a key tool to be able to get data from our user. With the auto-generated screens, a form was created to be able to create new records and to be able to update or delete existing ones. Let's have a look at how you would create a form for yourself. I'll create a new screen, which is blank. I'll just call it form, so forward slash form. I'm going to set the role access again. I'm going to set that to basic and above. And we start with an empty form. To find it easy, I'm just going to add a navigation. So I'll go to links, figure links. I want to add a link to the form. And that was at forward slash form. And I'll save that. So we've got a form button when we get to our preview. Inside of our screen, to be able to create a form, we need to have a form container. So like we needed a data provider for displaying data, to be able to create a form, we need a form container. So let's add a component and we'll scroll down and we can see all of these elements are to deal with forms. So I want the form, which is the form container, which we're going to keep create our form in. I'll call this my um, appointment form. Now in a form, I've got two types. I can create or update. So we're linking to data within our database, or some data source, whether it's a REST API or whether it's a Postgres or the BuddyBase DB. And we're asking, is this form to create or update a new appointment? So I'm going to create. I then have the schema that I want to test against. Now this will allow us to have the correct types of field inputs for the form. So I'm going to say I want this to be the appointments. I'm just going to leave the size as medium. We have the same margin and size and custom CSS that we can have. And we've also got these conditions that we could display this form, whether or we could hide this component or show this component or update some kind of setting within this component when the screen size, say, was a particular. For now, I've got my appointment form. I'm going to add within this a text input. So I'll type text. I've got text field, so I'll add that. Okay, so this text field is here. Let's give it, um, this is going to be for the reason. And we're going to give it a, which field is it for? It's for the reason field. Now, this is the only option because in my schema, it's the only field that accepts text. The label, so I'll say, um, what is the reason for your appointment? We can have some placeholder text, so that'll be appearing here. Type reason here. And we can have a default value, so that if this is a required field, we can have a default value. There are actions we can trigger on change. As well as being able to control the alignment and the margins, we can also add validation for a particular form input. So we can set the maximum length. So say we want the maximum length to be the value of of 30. We can add a specific error message saying, you know, um, input is too long. Or maybe we want to make sure that our reason only has alphanumeric characters in it. Well, we could do that by using regex. We say it must match. Um, and we could say something like uh, A to Z, lowercase, A to Z, uppercase, and spaces. And our message there could be something like only use letters and spaces. And when we validate our form, that'll be tested and the error message that we've set will be displayed. We could configure the validation. We can set the alignment. Again, we've got the margins, the size and the ability to have custom CSS. So that's a text field. Let's add a number field for, or a date field, sorry, for the date. I've added this field and when I click this drop down, I can't see the field. Now if I look over here, I realized that the new date picker is not nested under the form, so it doesn't have access to that form's details. So I click and drag it, I move it inside the form. Now when I do my drop down, I do have the option to select that field for the date. I'll add label, what date do you want to come in? And then we can sort of have people be able to select and have there and have the date ready to go. So we have our form data, now it would be great if we could actually submit our form. So to be able to do that, I'm going to click on my form before I click add component so that the new component will be added within the form. And I'm going to add a button. Got my button. I can change it to be whichever variant my theme I want. I can change it to be, you know, big, small or extra large. I want this to be quite big. Um, I want this inner text to say submit. So I'll call it the submit button, submit button. And I'll say, 
We've got the same styling things, and we have these actions which we need to use for our submit. Otherwise, our, when we click our button, it's not really going to do anything. It's just going to flash at us. So I'm going to click my button, I'm going to click Define Actions, and I wanted to do a couple of things. You can see there are loads of actions. Um, first thing I would like to do is I'd like it to validate the form, and it says, which form do you want to validate? I want to validate the appointment form. After we validated the form, I want to save a row. So where's my data source? Well, that's the appointment form. And which table do I want to save to? Well, that's the appointments table. And once I've done that, I want to just clear the form so that someone can add another one. Appointment form there. Now, I could do lots of other actions. I could refresh some data providers. I could upload some things. I could trigger an automation. I could have some conditional logic based on what's in the form. If the appointment was today, then I maybe would send a, a text message to my team to say, oh, there's one for today. Or if it was in a couple of weeks' time, I maybe set a, an alert to go out the week before just to remind my team. Another really common action is to navigate to a different part of our application after our form has been submitted. So we might navigate to back to the appointment screen. Without the navigation step, we stay on the same form ready to add a new appointment. So if, so if the use case is just add appointments over and over and over again, you'd clear the form and not navigate. If the use case is to add an appointment and then head back to see the full list, you'd navigate and not clear the form. For now, I'm just going to leave the clear form so I can add appointments over and over and over again, but your use case might be different. Now that that's done, I'll click Publish. And we'll view our application. Click on Form. Type the reason for your appointment. Sore foot. When do I want to come in? Let's come in on the 18th of August and I'll submit. So as I press Submit, I get the row saved and it's cleared the form here. If I go to my data layer now, and just check that that 18th of August appointment is there. So for my postgres appointments, 18th of August. So it's going to be the latest one. 18th of August, sore foot. Now, as your forms get more complex, you may want to have multi-steps so that you're not confusing your user and your user is able to see what they need to do at each particular step. So let's change this form into a multi-step form. I'm going to click on my form, I'm going to add component, and I'm going to add a form step. Move this right to the top. And I'm going to move reason inside of my form step like that. And I'm going to have a second step. So I'll click my appointment form again. I'll add a step, my second step then, which will have the date picker. So pick up the date picker, hover over step two and drop it in. And the submit button will be in step two as well. Okay, so now we've got two steps, step one and step two. If we publish this, we'll have a look. We can see that we can see step one now, but not step two. So we need some mechanism to move from step one into the next. And we're going to do that with a button. So inside of step one, I'll add another component. It's going to be a button and we'll give it some top margin and we'll say next. And this button then is going to be the button that they'll click in order to move to the next step. So I'll define the actions on this button. And I'll say set form step, change form step, which form, the appointment form, which step, the next step, save. Brill. So let's try that now. So I've got my reason. Um, I've got um, dodgy elbow, new button. And when do you want to come in? Um, the 24th of August. Submit. Row saved. And it is there. Now a couple of things. That button, that, that button should really say, um, I put the next in the wrong place. That should be there. The other thing is that when I saved, I'm still on the date menu. I really want to go back to the start again. So I, in the submit button, I'm going to define actions. And once I've cleared the form, I'll add a last action for change form step. And I'll change the appointment form to the first step. So I'll save, we'll publish that. I'll do it one more time. So what's my reason to come in? I have lost my leg. Next, what date do you want to come in? September 1st. Submit, and where form is cleared, the row has been saved, we're back to the start of the form. We could redirect to another page, we could do any number of actions, but we're back to the start of the form and we could have some for our users here. So with this large selection of form components and with form steps, and buttons to be able to move between and define actions, you're able to create forms as complex as you need and to be able to make your business move forward.